Well, as, as I continue with what I started last week about being a couple of weeks ago, an all-in-all commitment to being identified with Jesus of Nazareth, no matter what. And the question was, will you be an N, a Christian who wears the mark of Jesus the Nazarene, wherever you go, whatever you do, at whatever cost? Those in Iraq who followed Christ were marked with an N, and they stood up no matter what they lost. One pastor said, I might lose my head, but I have gained Christ. Then last week, I talked about some Bs we should be as Christian. First is believing, and then to be born again, and then to be baptized into Christ. Now, we didn't have time to get one of the most challenging Bs, and that's what I'm sharing today, and that is becoming what God sees in us as our best goal. Now, this all starts with a first becoming, which is a transformation of our basic reality, which is first mentioned in the first chapter of John's gospel, which is that we are becoming children of God. Now, this is a change in our status that starts when we believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who is sent to be our Savior. It makes us what we thought we were already, according to the wisdom of the world. But to truly become children of God, we need God to do his work for us. As John says in John chapter 1, verse 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Well, the good news for us that may have a lazy spirit or an unguided start to our life in Christ, is that the verse in John says, to all who received him and believed him. Well, this is good news because sometimes it takes us a while to catch up to what God has done in our lives. The verse in John, as it says, to all who received him and believed him, it means that we can come to this point with every other believer by first putting our hope in Jesus Christ. I can never assume that everyone who hears me has gotten here yet, even in this beginning point of believing in his name, that we might receive him and become the children of God. I can never assume that everyone who hears me has gotten here. At the church I served in British Columbia, Canada, one of my very faithful servants of the church who had been a board member and helped in promoting the church and talked with me many, many times, a man named Helmut, at the end of five years of ministry, told me that he had now become a believer, not just in his head, but in his heart. For most of his adult life, he had believed in Jesus, but not received the grace of God until the ministry I happened to bring and the teaching of God's word. And this is not because what I did as pastor, but, be, but because of what God did through his word. But I can never assume that everyone who hears me are there yet. There's a lot of people who consent to the idea of Christ, who have not really received and believed in Christ in their hearts. Every one of us needs to believe with our mind and receive in our hearts the saving power of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came that we might become children of God, not children of the world or children of the devil because of our selfishness and sin. We need to put our hope in Jesus, confessing our sins and receiving his grace for our forgiveness and then accepting his transforming power within. When the result of a statement about what God is doing in us and for us because of our believing hearts begins with all, that's good news for us because our future hope is not based on our feeble human efforts as we've tried by following the laws and rules about living, as did my friend Helmut. No, it is so much more. The good news of the gospel 
is based in the transforming power of God's spirit that is transfused into us, that creates eternal life in us instead of the eternal dying of our sinful souls. Paul says to us in Romans 8, 15 to 16, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Well, trying to make ourselves acceptable to God because we know that he's going to get us if we don't get it right is living in fear. The trying comes when we as humans in our lives try to please God through following his law rather than through placing our trust in him. This is the slavery that Paul talks about in this verse. A slave doesn't necessarily trust their master. They must follow their master. The law can be that kind of a master. But God is a father who loves us so much. He wants to wrap us up in his arms of love, not through slavery to the law, because the alternative is so much better to receive the adoption, to become the sons and daughters, the children of God. We did not receive a spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption so that we can say, Daddy God, Abba Father, and that God would wrap us up in his arms because of that. And in our spirit, our hearts connect with his, and we know whose we are. We know where our trust is, and we know that God is doing a work in us. Well, that's the first important becoming. It's because of God's work in us, not because of our work for him, that we become the children of God. Our work for God needs to be the response of God's work in us making us his children because of Jesus Christ. The next becoming is becoming sons of light. Now, sons of light means that we're going to be torchbearers of Jesus. We're going to carry the flashlight in the dark room. We're going to light the way for ourselves and for others around us. Being torchbearers of Jesus in the darkness of a sinful world, this happens because of our full identity with Jesus and with what it means to be the children of God. And it can only happen when our becoming is based in our believing. Just like when we become the children of God is based in our believing in Jesus. One of the last things that Jesus said to the crowd in Jerusalem before he retreated to the upper room for his last meal with his disciples is about becoming sons of light. Now, here's how John puts it in his gospel. Just a couple of verses after John records that God thundered from heaven that he would glorify his name. So Jesus warned people not to continue to walk in the darkness of sin. He said, in John 12, 36, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light, becoming children of God, now becoming sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. The scripture says as the last part and next thing we have is that Jesus ends up with his disciples in the upper room. Now, Jesus said these things to those who hadn't quite connected their hearts with God's heart through Jesus Christ. The crowds were curious. Some of those in the crowds were believers in Jesus, but most of the people that heard Jesus' voice had not allowed his word to penetrate their souls and transform their spirits. Jesus said again to believe in him. Jesus is the light that's walking with them, with us. 
Now he says that by believing in him, we're on a path that is becoming more of what he is. It's a becoming that believers have as we believe in his name, becoming the children of God, becoming the sons of light. And the good news is that the light shines in the darkness and darkness cannot put out light. Darkness cannot put out light, but light will always put out darkness. Since we have so much infection with the deadly coronavirus pandemic, a lot of people have been buying light wands or light stands that emit ultraviolet light because that light can disable or kill the virus that end up on our phones and our watches and our wallets. We can't see that light very well. It's usually just a part of the light of the sun. Uh, it's a little further out of our sight range than the black lights that were so popular in dorm rooms and party places in the early 70s. But that same light can sunburn our, that can sunburn our skin can also kill the virus. Well, when the light of Christ shines into the darkness of our souls, it cleanses us from our sin way better than any ultraviolet light sanitizes our phones or whatever from the viruses that we might gather in the world. Now, as followers of Jesus, we can become the bearers of that same light into our sin-darkened world. Where there is injustice, the light of Christ is needed. Where there is strife, the light of Christ is needed. Where there is racism, the light of Christ is needed. Where there is injury or whether, where there is exploitation, whether, where there is danger and where children are not safe, the light of Christ is needed. Where there is abuse and where there is a neglect, we can, as sons and daughters of light, bring the light of Christ into those dark places through believing in Christ, becoming lights in this dark world, becoming his torch bearers. The light of Christ and becoming sons of that light is of truly practical value in the here and now of our lives. But there's also another really important becoming for our own future hope. Paul describes this in the Bible as becoming heirs of eternal life. Becoming heirs of eternal life. Now, to become an heir is to be adopted fully into the family of God as children of God. Now, if someone is already a son or daughter, as Jesus is, they're already an heir. You, Jesus didn't have to become an heir of eternal life. He was already there. But an inheritor of all the Father has from outside of being the Son of God means that we have to be adopted fully into his family. And when we're adopted as children of God, then we are fully heirs. For us, each one of us, it is because of the grace of God and the atoning work of Jesus Christ and the, on the cross, as Paul says in Titus 3, 7. So that being justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. That's the goal of God's love for us. Being justified by his grace is what is already been done for us when we believe in Jesus Christ is not what we can do for ourselves. If we stand before the throne of God without first being justified by the grace of God, we stand guilty of all our sins. When we stand before the throne of God, being justified by his grace, that means it's just as if I'd never sinned. And that's good news. And we're adopted into his family. Now, that's what God has already done for us. But through that grace, we have a might become that is our real goal, that we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. It means that we will more and more and more and more be growing into that which God has 
designed for us. Each of these becomings that I'm talking about is something we work on all through our lives. Some things we become by belief and the work is done, but so many things we have to continue to grow into that so that we can be better lights of what God is doing, that we can bring the truth into the world, that we can be live as heirs of eternal life, that goal of God's love when Jesus said, was sent into the sinful world that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The goal of God's love. It's what we already are as believers, that is inheritors of God's love. And yet it's what we're still becoming as believers at the same time. You know, as kids, we can put on dad's jacket and just be totally swallowed up in it. Now, we're wearing the jacket, but we haven't grown into it. But we can eventually grow into it as we mature and as we develop. That's a little like what it means to become heirs of eternal life. Although it's what we are, it takes growing into it so that we'll be sure and content in the peace of God as we become people who live like eternity matters more than this life matters. It's what allows us to gracefully pass from this life into eternity when our time comes because of sickness or age or cancer or accident or whatever. When we have grown into that idea of becoming heirs of the hope of eternal life, then our peace transcends even that pathway of death. And finally, there's a last B that you should have, and that is becoming like Jesus. Becoming like Jesus. This is really the goal of a disciple, someone who follows, someone who knows that they are saved, who knows that Jesus is their master, who knows that Jesus is the one that they must follow. Becoming like Jesus means that we're becoming more and more like the sons and daughters of God that God has designed us to be. While we walk on this earth, we're bombarded by everything that tries to tear that away from us. We're bombarded by everything that tries to divert our attention. We are surrounded by those things that try and tell us there's a, there's a simpler way to live than following Jesus. When I have discovered in my years that the simplest way for me to live is know that I have one master and that master is God through his son, Jesus Christ. That's a simple way to live, not be torn here, there, and the other place. Here's what, here's what it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, we are God's children now. Okay, so when we believe, we become God's children. It's what we've been made to be. We are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. See him as he is. It's necessary that we know Jesus very, very well so we know what we're growing into. So we know what we're becoming. We know Jesus well by our, by our study of the scriptures by our prayers, by the Spirit of God dwelling in us. But still, John, John says, 1 John chapter 3, this was written many years after the Gospel of John was written. And he says, what we will be has not yet appeared. In other words, each of us is still becoming more like Jesus. It's, our, our lives has not burst forth with Christ. We got little pinpoints that are starting to show out. We have little pieces of our life that look like Jesus, but we haven't become fully like Jesus. We will finally, in the end, be like him because we shall see him as he is. We shall know him better. We'll be who we are designed to be. After we're brought into the family by Jesus Christ, we need to follow our older brother. <laughs> we need to see what he does. 
We need to see how he acts. We need to do what he does. He said, I, there's nothing I can say except what God the Father has told me to say. There's nothing I can do except what God the Father has showed me to do. This was Jesus' testimony to glorify his Father in heaven while he walked on this earth. For each of us to be so very led by God's Spirit as God's children means that we are becoming more and more and more like Jesus. When we see him for who he really is, we become closer and closer and closer to what he's designed us to be. And what uh, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3.18 is important too. And we all, I like the all word there when it's talking about believers, we all with an unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Unveiled face. You know, when uh, Moses walked in to the tent of meeting, he veiled his face. He put a veil over so that he would be partially hid from the glory of God. And still, when he came out of there, he was shining. Well, we are allowed to come face to face to the glory of God without any intervening veils, without anything in the way. Because in our lives, following Jesus, we are being transformed into the same image of Christ. From one degree of glory, we, we have the glory of salvation right now. We're looking forward to the other glory of being exactly like Christ in the presence of God. It comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Becoming like Jesus. That's our final word on becoming. Just review what I said here. We are becoming children of God. We have to kind of grow into what we are. We are becoming sons of light that we might bring the light of Christ into the darkness of the world. We are becoming heirs of eternal life as we grow into this very idea that we do not have to hang on to this life with our fingernails scratching at the door, but instead we can release our souls into the one who knows us and loves us and cares for us. We can live like death is no issue. And you know, that makes a difference in our life. It makes a difference in our relationship. There have been times that in our marriage, between Bobby and I, we've had to look death in the face. And you know, when we are through truly heirs of Christ, eternal life, that hope of life, we can look death in the face and say, you know, I'm looking forward to the eternal life. And we can live that way. And it makes a difference in how we live. And finally, becoming like Jesus, our ultimate and full and amazing goal that God is allowing and at work doing. God is at work doing it. This last part of this last verse that's up on the screen, for this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Let us let God work in our lives that we might become all that he wants us to be. Let us pray together. Thank you, Father, for the goodness of your gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you that we have our sins atoned for by Christ's sacrifice. Thank you that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, confessing our sins and being being cleansed from our sins and being transformed into the children, the sons of light, the heirs of eternal life, and more like your first son, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you are doing the work in us. Thank you that as we surrender to you, our surrender opens a way for your work to increase. 
Help us give ourselves to you even this moment as we commit once again to you, our God and Father. Amen.